Hi, I'm Kevin Scott with 100 Huntley Street, and we are joined here today by Dr. John Perkins, who is one of the leading evangelical voices to come out of the civil rights movement. I am so excited to have him here today. John, it's great to be with you. It's good to be with you, and it's good to be on 100 Huntley Street again. Well, I, we are so glad you're here. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you're up to these days and, um, and what you're doing uh, with your foundation. Well, I'm trying to finish my course uh, uh, and pass on what I have learned out of struggle uh, during these uh, 57 years that I've been in the kingdom of God, 54 years, sort of somewhat full-time uh, ministry and trying to pass that on to the leadership. And so anytime I can get together some leaders to share uh, what we, the past, the present, and yeah. look to the future and how we can make a better future. Yeah. That's my that's my thoughts right now, and God has given me more opportunities than I can fulfill. Yeah, wow. Let's take a step back. I know that um, uh, your brother was tragically murdered in Mississippi, and you vowed that you would never return there, and now you live and do work in Jackson, Mississippi. Can you tell us about that story and, and yeah. why you decided to go back? <laughs> Yeah, you, you have to know a little bit about my early life. Uh, my mother died when I was seven months old. Uh, I, ne I got to know my father, it interact with him, but it seemed that he somewhat rejected us early on in life. And so I sort of grew up without the, an institution of love, an intact family. My own family, what I went to, my grandmother and my uncle took me in, took us in, the five of us, she ended up giving three of them away wow. uh, to other members of the family, and uh, then I was raised there. So I grew up in this sort of an intact family. And then, of course, this one brother that was close to me then, uh, he went into World War II and came mm -hmm. out, went over there to fight Hitler's racism, and then come back to his own hometown and was killed on a race incident when wow. I was uh, 16 years old. And uh, then I left. Uh, because our family was afraid that something might happen to us. And so I vowed to leave Mississippi never to come back. Wow. But it was after being there for about 10 years that I, I came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Wow. I found what I didn't have, and that was the love of God. Wow. And I said, if there's a God in heaven that loved me enough to give his only begotten son to die for me, I really want to know that God. And I was kept going to Sunday school and being disciple, and I came to know that Christ. Yeah. Then I realized, first I realized that I was a deep sinner, even though all those other things that had happened to my brother and others, that I was a deep sinner. And, and I really said, I want to go back and live out my Christian life yeah. back in uh, Mississippi. As I look back over it now, in and, and that experience and my discipleship, I think that uh, once you get to understand God, that he's a pretty big God, yeah. that he's probably big. And I think that's one of the problems with us. I think we have reduced God and think of him as an individual buddy and friend. Yeah. And we reduced him so little that he can only make my need. And I think that's what makes prosperity, Christianity so popular, because God is, is going to meet my need. Well, God wants to do more than that. Yeah. He wants us to enter into his redemptive work. That should, that should give us the thoughts, the greatness. That should give us a thought that we can work together with this creative God. Yeah. Uh, the God who caused this light to shine out of darkness. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. Yeah. And he said, let there be light. And it's been light. The darkness can't put it out. Yeah. That God... Paul says, has shined that light into our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God as we look in the face of Jesus Christ. So we have reduced God too much to our individualistic yeah. idea yeah. that he has a bigger purpose for us than that. Even when he tells us to work, he tells us to work with our own hand assuming that we're going to be an infidel if we don't take care of ourselves and our family yeah. so we can give to other people the need. Yeah. And it's that neighbor, it's that neighbor, it's that neighbor that he calls us to. Uh, 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 to. 
so this is so interesting because what you're saying is that so many people want a life that's easy or that's comfortable, but the love of God literally compelled you to go back to a, a very tough place and a tough situation and a tough circumstance, but, but you were willing to do that because of the love uh, that Christ gave you first. Yeah, I, I think so. I think it's in, that, it's in that need for a challenge and in that need for a challenge, it don't mean that it's easy. Then you have to look back after that mm -hmm. and see where your learning curve was. And that's where it was at. Yeah. Because you, people talk about reconciliation. It was in that Brandon jail in 1970 when I was tortured by white policemen. And uh, I saw the evil of racism, the evil of it. Mm -hmm. But as I saw it, I could see myself. Because if I'd have had an atomic hand grenade, I would have pulled the plug and it would have killed all of us in that jail. I saw that my sin was just as dark as their sin. And yeah. that's when I said, Lord, if you let me out of this jail alive, I know I was bargaining with God, so I'm yeah. not being no hero. I was bargaining with God. I was trying to get God to let me yeah. out of that jail. I said, if you let me out of this jail tonight, I want to preach a gospel that is stronger than my, than my racial interest. Wow. I want to preach a gospel that is stronger than, I want to preach a gospel that can reconcile white, blacks, Jews, and Gentiles mm -hmm. to Jesus Christ. Wow. And I'm living to see this whole new multicultural church planting. It's just a small, small seed. Yeah. Or you could say it's just a small little cloud like Elijah, but it's going to win. Yeah. It's the winner. It's the winner. It's going to say, who are these in Revelation? Yeah. These are they that came out of great tribulation. Wow. These are the ones who worshiping God from every nation and every town. That was the intention. We wow. allowed racism and slavery and economic exploitation to blind us to that, to blind us to that. And of course, what we're doing though, we don't see the depths of that blindness, which means we can't repent adequate enough. Yeah. You, you know. Uh, Let me ask you this. I love that you are Dr. Perkins but you have all of these honorary doctorates, but you only completed the third grade, is that Somewhere correct? Somewhere between the third and the fifth grade, I dropped out That's, and I went back to school. That is so amazing. Tell me about that and how you've gained such wisdom in your life. Well, I, I tell you, when I was in my discipleship, I was trying to read the Bible. That somebody told me, a lady, a former missionary, she told me that I needed to read the whole Bible uh, so I could get a drip of what the Bible was about that it was a storybook. Mm -hmm. It's a story of God's redemption, you, you know. And so I was to have to read the whole Bible. And so I was excited reading the Bible because how it had affected me when I came to Christ. And, uh, and I came to uh, uh, chapter 12, and, um, and uh, boy, I could hear God when he said, Abraham, get thee out from among your kindred, from your father's house, and, and I'll make you, it was like, the disciple, the call of the disciple. I will make you. I will bless them that bless you. I curse them that curse you. Through you, Abraham, all the families of the earth would be blessed. And I, I took that blessing I, on myself. I asked God for that blessing. And I said, Lord, would you redeem my name? Wow. And if you redeem my name and help me to understand the Bible, I will preach it the rest of my life. I would be faithful. Again, you know, you, I'm making this emotional uh, commitment. Yeah. But it looked like when I finished, said that, I opened the Bible and began to read it. And I remember when I read through it, I was rejoicing that one evening, and I was telling my wife about it, going through the Bible. But it looked like when I looked back on the pages that a recorder went off in my head and I could remember, like, the meaning of the story. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I got, you, you know, Nahum and all those books over there you never hear. You know, I got a sense of what that story was about. Yeah. And, I, and I think that, uh, boy, that's been, uh, you know, what I've been trying to do is yeah. explain that. And now more and more uh, people are saying to me, let's go to the next level. I said, no, no, we done got too far away from the first level. Yeah. <laughs> we need to go back to the basics. 
And you know, the scripture that I'm preaching today is John 3.16. The scripture that I'm preaching today is, uh, is Psalms 1, uh, Psalms uh, 23. Mm -hmm. Those are so basic scriptures, but people don't set them so much, they don't get the significance. And they don't see yeah. the foundation on which those scriptures are, yeah. are, are, are based. So I'm enjoying doing yeah. that these days. Dr. Perkins, you have so much wisdom uh, for leaders and, and for people that are trying to, to do what God's called them to do. What, what characteristics do you think are important for leaders or, or someone that's younger that's coming along today and trying to figure out uh, the role that God's called them to? I, I, I think it's, um, it's a hunger. How do you create that hunger? Mm -hmm. uh, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, David said, my heart painteth after God like a deer at a water brook. The art of preaching, I think, is finding that longing, okay. finding that longing in your, in, in, in your audience. What are you longing for? What are you longing for? Yeah. Then the good news become good news. What was I longing for? I was longing for love without a mother, without a father. I know my grandmother loved us collectively, yeah. but I didn't feel loved individually. Yeah. And boy, that morning, uh, I found if I, if I could sing, I'd sing this song. I was feasting on this husk around me till my strength was almost gone. Long my soul for something better, only still to hang on, but hallelujah. I found that God was love, that God was love. And that's the central message uh, of, the, yeah. of, of the gospel. I love your passion for the Lord and for what he's done. I think if, if the church today could get a hold of the passion you're talking about, it would revolutionize uh, the work of God around the world. And so I'm so thankful for you and what you've done, and thankful you took time to be with us today on 100 Huntley Street. Thank you so much. Good to be with you. Thank you.